Well, hey, everybody, today we are answering your questions. So if you've got questions about any of my books, about my author journey, about the publishing industry, anything related to writing, I will happily get that answered for you today. We're hanging out for just the next couple of minutes. As you can see, I just kind of finished making some TikToks, so my hair's all curly today, and we are taking your questions. So I actually got some really good questions on TikTok in the last 24 hours or so, and I want to jump in and answer a couple of those for you. And if you're joining me live, go ahead and drop those down below. And if you're joining us on a replay, you can leave your questions on any of my TikToks, any of my YouTube videos, any of my Instagram posts, any of my Facebook posts or DM me or email me with your questions. I will happily create videos for you to get those questions answered. Now, one great question I got just a few minutes ago, actually, was where can people get signed author copies of books? And most authors actually sell signed copies on their website. So the best place and the first place you should be looking is the author's website. Now, sometimes you can get these through bookstores. Sometimes you can get these through the publishers. But here's a pro tip for you and a little hint. If you buy them directly from the author, they usually make a little more money than if they bought them or if you bought them through a bookstore or through the publisher because authors are able to buy copies of their own books at a slightly discounted rate and then when they sell them to you at the normal price that you would buy it off of Amazon or Barnes & Noble, you're actually getting a little more in their pocket than if they were going through their publisher or if you bought them online. So the more you know. So you can usually get signed copies directly from the author at their website. If they don't have the website or if they don't have it up on their website where you can find it, DM them and ask them. They can send you a PayPal. They can send you invoices other ways and you can get signed copies directly from the author. Now you also can pick these up from conventions or from events. And you guys know I travel all over the country signing and speaking at different cons and events. So when COVID isn't a thing, I love to travel and I love to see you guys at places like New York Comic Con or Mermagicon or PenCon or any of those really cool places where we are signing books or speaking, you can grab signed copies from authors as well. If you're just jumping in, I'm answering your questions live. I'm hanging out for about 10, 15, 20 minutes answering whatever author questions you have, whether it's writing, the publishing industry, we can talk about my books. I would love to get your questions answered, so go ahead and drop those down below for me and I will get those answered while we're here hanging out. And if you're on our replay on YouTube, go ahead and leave your questions. I'll answer them in my next live stream here on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, or on Facebook, because you guys know I go live all over the place. Hey, hey, excited to see all of you, and I'm answering questions that came in a little bit earlier today or yesterday on TikTok, but if you guys have questions, I want to prioritize yours, so please get down in my comments and ask me questions about my books, my characters, writing, about the publishing industry, about the writing process, whatever you got, I'm happy to answer for you today, as we're here hanging out live on TikTok. Um... I have been getting a lot of questions about what books you can find in bookstores. And that's something that's really very interesting because I bet you guys didn't know, or I bet most of you didn't know, most publishers, small, medium, and even some of the bigger size publishers are considered indie. So that is almost, well, it is, it's the exact same thing as um, self-publishing. So when bookstores, when schools, when different things are taking into consideration who they're putting on their shelves, these smaller publishers, the medium-sized publishers, and even some of the bigger publishers are considered indie, which means it's gonna be treated a little different than traditional. Traditional is seen as the big five houses in the industry, so if it's not one of the big five, it's actually considered indie. And here's the deal. Authors of any size with any publisher can actually get into bookstores. I'm in many, many bookstores all over the country, actually all over the world, and um, both my indie books and my traditional books have been in these bookstores. So you can actually get your book into bookstores if you work with specific printers, specific distributors. There's all sorts of ways that you can get your book in stores and on shelves, and they just make different decisions when it comes to what they want. Sometimes it's going to be all across the country in all their stores. Sometimes it's going to be regionalized or more localized. Sometimes it's going to be individual stores will stock it, and it's different choices made by different people. So bookstores actually have somebody who makes decisions for all the stores, so like the, the big ones that they're stocking in all the stores, but then each store also gets to make their own decisions. So not only do they get to pick what they want, but they can go in and they can say, 
oh, this person is local to us, or this person lives within, you know, the region, they're near-ish us, we're going to stock it in this area. Or they can stock them specifically for a book signing. So there's lots of ways that you can get your book into bookstores, libraries, schools, all those fun, fabulous things, but that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, and I would love to get into it sometime. We will. Over on YouTube, you know, we will. But I am here to answer your questions. I know we have people here hanging out, chilling with us today. If you've got questions, please jump down in. Or at the very least, say hello to me so I can say hi. Right now, I'm just kind of chatting and answering questions that came into TikTok a little bit earlier in the day or yesterday or the last couple of days. But I really want to hang out with you guys here. Happy Labor Day, by the way. I only now just realized that today was a holiday. I knew yesterday that it was, but then I got so busy creating TikToks and writing books and doing YouTube videos today that I completely forgot it was a holiday. So happy holiday. <laughs> I'm excited to see each and every one of you jumping on and I would love to get your questions answered. So go ahead and ask me your questions. I'll even answer questions about marketing because you guys know I'm a social media marketing strategist. I actually teach entrepreneurs how to build profitable businesses through smart social media marketing and I've been teaching on TikTok lately so I can teach you guys how to grow on TikTok. Um, are you planning on having your books translated into different languages? So when it comes to translating books into different languages, that's really up to a couple different factors. The publisher can decide to do it, or if it's an indie book, you can decide to do it. But when it comes to that, you have to take into consideration a couple of different factors. How many people in other countries, in other languages are going to want it? So do you have a big following in that other country with that other language? Is it going to be enough to make it worth it? Because whoever it is, a publisher or an individual author has to pay to have that translated. And that is really expensive. It takes a really long time to write a book. It does not take as long to translate a book, but it's still a ton of work because that person is transcribing the book word for word into another language. So this is a very costly thing. If you do not have enough fans in that region or with that language to actually make it very profitable, it's not a good choice for you simply because you're not going to make your money back. Is it cool to have books in other languages? Yes, it is. But if it's not going to bring the money back in, it's not worth taking the time and the money to put into it because a lot of us have learned there are a lot of English speakers in other countries. And so I have very big fan bases in places like Germany, um, in some of the other countries that have other languages that they speak. And they are all reading my books in English. So I could, and I would love to have my books in other languages, but right now my fan base is English speaking in these other countries. So it would kind of be a lot of work to build up that fan base in another language. So really it just kind of comes down to how many people and how much of a demand are you going to have on a book in another language. And then you have to figure out which language you're going to jump into. Spanish? French? Uh, oh, cool. That's awesome. Um, so right now I don't have any books translated into other languages simply because my entire fan base in other countries comes to me and is able to read in English. Yes, I've had a lot of people ask about translations in other languages. We just don't have the fan base in that other language to make it something that we're going to take that step with. We also have some other things that we're doing before we get into other language translations, like audiobooks. We're doing some really cool production type things with some of my books. So that is something that, yes, is going to eventually be on the list of things to do, but is not right now for my particular books. And it depends on each individual book, each individual author, each individual publisher, and the fan bases that we are creating. If you hear my dogs, I'm sorry. I don't know why they're barking. They're upstairs hanging out. Um, hello, we are answering all the questions. If you've got them, please go ahead and drop those down for me. I would love to get those answered for you. My books, my characters, my writing process, writing in general, the publishing industry, being an author, whatever. Go ahead, hit me up. I would love to get your questions answered. Um, I'm just stalling because I got people on the way and I got a little bit of time before they head over here. After I filmed a bunch of YouTube videos and TikTok videos, dang, wait until you see what I have prepared for you guys coming out over the next couple of days. I have a good, what, like 70 TikToks stored in TikTok and like a good handful I have to edit and then import in. So I got a lot of really cool things. It involves steampunk. 
It involves fairies. It involves a lot of sass. <laughs> some really fun things. So I got some cool TikToks for you coming out. And today we actually blew up because I posted a TikTok on my Cinderella retelling where Cinderella is actually an assassin out to murder the prince at the ball, but he's hunting her too. And he actually ends up making her work for him to find the would-be murderess and it's her and it's just, it's very interesting. Uh, so we kind of blew up unexpectedly on that video. It's always interesting to me to see the TikToks that blow up. I wouldn't necessarily think that one over another one, um, but it's always the ones you don't expect to blow up that just kind of boom, a couple thousand in, in an hour or so. So it's lots and lots of fun. If you've got questions, I would love to get those answered for you. We're here answering your questions for the next couple of minutes. So writing, author life, the publishing world, bookstores, book reviews, how to get review copies. We can talk about um, how to come up with book ideas. We can talk about the writing process. We can talk about my characters, which I would really like to do. If you read my books, please talk to me about my books. That makes me happy. Um, but I would love to get your questions answered. So go ahead and hit me up. Let me know what your questions are. Hello, hello. Thanks guys for joining us. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. All right. So let's talk more about bookstores because this is a question I get a lot. It's been showing up on my TikTok a lot recently and people want to know how do you get your books into bookstores? So if you're a reader and you want to see your favorite author in your local bookstore, what does that look like? What's that process like? Well, sometimes your favorite author will be there and that's super exciting. When you get to the bookstore, take pictures, show proof, social media, you know, if you don't put it on social, it didn't happen, right? So you wanna make sure that you are documenting it and then tagging the author in it. But if you go to a bookstore and you don't see the author that you want, go talk to the employees. Not only can they order it for you, but if you make a big deal out of it, if you actually like talk up this book that you're really excited for, they're very likely to stock it inside of your library, your school, your bookstore, whatever it happens to be. In fact, this week I was actually chatting with someone who recognized my name on TikTok. Like I was on her For You page, she was just scrolling through and um, we had started chatting and she recognized my name when I popped into one of her live streams just to like watch and chat. Turns out she is a teacher and her students have my book in her her in her classroom library and they fight over all the time like how fun is that all you got to do is ask people are usually pretty nice about getting those books in for you and stocking them for other people to read as well how long does it take to write a book you've been working on yours for five ish years now okay don't freak out when i say this <laughs> um i can write a full length novel in nine and a half days but that's because it's my profession. I have worked very hard to get up to the point where I can write very, very fast. I run multiple full-time businesses. I write around doing my work. So around working, I can write a full-length novel in nine and a half days if I need to. And um, I can actually, from start to finish, like the time I start down and start writing a book, I can write it in those nine and a half days. And if my editor is like on top of her game, she can get it back to me in a couple of days. I can have a book from the time I sit down to start writing the very first sentence to being in readers' hands in under two weeks. That is not normal. Please don't compare yourself to me. Most authors take a couple of months to write their books. I know one other person who writes as fast as me. Most people do not write that fast. So don't think that you are, are lacking if you're comparing yourself to me because that's not a good case. Um, if you are taking many years to write a book, it sounds to me like you need to sit yourself down and plot your book out and stop going back to fix things. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Just write your dang book and then fix it in editing. So sit down, plot your book, note every stepping stone, all those main things, and then just write it. Take a couple months, just write it out. Do not go back. Don't go back. Write it then you can go back and fix it and that's going to help you move along a lot faster. If however, this is still not working for you, it sounds like this is probably the wrong project for you to be working on right now. Put this one aside, pull out a new story, write that one straight through and then come back to the other one. It's going to get you more in the mind space and the headset to actually get that accomplished. Because if you are going to try to be a published author, you have to remember this is a business. And if you don't have a product out there, you can't make money. So if you're just spending years and years and years writing a book, 
Nobody's ever going to see it. It's never going to matter. It's not going to make you any money. You're not going to be an author. So you have to train yourself to write in a way that actually gets the book out there and then come back to the one that's holding you up or giving you some trouble and do that one later on. All right. Um, what's my most known book? I've got over two dozen books out right now. Um, I have a number of bestsellers. So the Golden Trilogy, that's my Goldilocks retelling, was the number seven best-selling book on Amazon. I have all books in existence. Jaded Duology was the number 74 best-selling book out of all books in existence. And the Siren Wars Saga was the number 87 best-selling book out of all books in existence. And all of those were number one in their categories. Um, actually, all of my books at one point or another have been number one in all of their categories. And so I've got a whole bunch of books. Four of them are out free right now, by the way, if you search my name. I got you. I got you. Um, how do you come up with story ideas and plot ideas? I tend to pull from the world around me. So sometimes I'll like drive over a bridge and it's really cool and inspiring to me. So I take a note on my phone and I, I actually created an entire world built around this bridge and then this dystopian world formed around it. It was really cool. Sometimes I get my inspiration from watching movie trailers in the theater when they had the commercials on and I'll look at the background elements like the teeny tiny things in the back corner and that will spark an idea. Again, I'll write it down on my phone and I'll use it later. People get ideas from music, from other stories, from movies. They can get it from experiences. They can get it from seeing animals out in nature. They can get it from walking around in nature. There's all sorts of things that you can do to get inspiration you just take some notes on your phone and then piece it together when you're ready to write. Uh, you don't even think you could count to nine, let alone write in nine days. <laughs> Ethan, <laughs> you're so funny. Um, you're on your fifth draft. Your mom says you have to quit changing it. Well, you do. <laughs> if you want your book to be out, you gotta stop changing it. You gotta, you gotta pick a course and go with it. But it has to be logical, it has to make sense. I'm gonna give you a really big, really important recommendation. If you're struggling with this, and it clearly sounds like you are, if you've been through five drafts in five years, you are going to need to finish your book, have whatever draft you're on, just kind of like clean it up a bit, and then I want you to go and hire a developmental editor. This is not like grammar spelling er error editor. This is somebody looking for plot holes, looking to tighten things up, help you shave things out that don't need to be there, help you add things in that do need to be there. They're here to make your book relevant and really, really strong. Hire a developmental editor. They will come in. They'll tell you what you need to get rid of, what you need to add in, what you need to tighten up, what you need to add to. They're going to tell you exactly what you need to do to make your book marketable to then take the next steps of either publishing it yourself or finding an agent to represent you with a publishing house. It's worth the cost. It truly is. Um, yeah. How do I know if my writing is good or not? Okay, so when you are trying to figure out if your writing is good or not, first step is to find beta readers. These are not your friends and family. These are people who understand the genre that you're writing in. So you want to find book world people. If you don't know any, you're on TikTok, ask people. You're on Instagram, ask people. You're on social media, ask for people who like whatever genre you're writing in and ask for volunteers to beta read for you. We've talked about beta readers before. I want you to make sure you're careful with your book and you're careful with the people you work with. So send them one chapter and test it. Tell them what you're looking for in terms of feedback. And if you like it, send them two more chapters or maybe four more chapters. Then see if you really like the feedback. If it's working well for you, then give them the whole book and let them read it. After you go through the beta reader process, maybe you're going to need a developmental editor. That's up to you based on the feedback. You don't have to take everybody's feedback. You just got to listen to it, look for themes, look for things that are reoccurring, find out where your problems are and tighten it up and fix it. Developmental editors do cost money. That's different than a beta reader. Beta readers are free. Developmental editors cost money, but they are so worth it for new authors. So worth it, especially if you're young, especially if you're just doing this for the first time, especially if you got a lot going on. Worth it. And please keep in mind, not everyone will like your writing. Okay, I'm a best-selling author. I had the number seven best-selling book out of all books in existence and people leave me bad reviews. They tell me they don't like things or I shouldn't have written that or it doesn't help the plot or blah, 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 whatever. People don't always like your writing and that's okay. 
you're not the author for everybody. Keep that in mind. People will not like it. Here's a story for you. My friend, back in the day, before I became a published author, the one who really encouraged me to become a published author, this, hey girl, thanks for the big love. I appreciate you. This girl wanted me to publish. And then when I did, she tried to read my book and she didn't like it. And that's okay. And she got kind of aggressive about it. And she told me why she didn't like it. And it, I mean, that's fine. But not everybody's going to like your book, including your friends, including your family. I have relatives who look at me and say, I don't know how my girly niece could write something so vicious. People will not always like your writing. That's okay. It's okay because you will find your tribe. You will find your readers. You will find your fans. So please don't stress out if somebody doesn't like your book. And don't read your reviews ever for any reason. Not even the good ones. Just don't do it. It's a terrible thing. Don't do it. <laughs> but you will find people who will cheerlead you. I do recommend finding a developmental editor, especially if you are brand new. They will help you on this one. Um, and and then get beta readers to give you good feedback. All right. Let's see. What's my... Oh, okay. There's actually a lot of them. Hold on. Should I start finding an agent during or after my first draft? You cannot get an agent without a fully completed manuscript. It must be the absolute best that you can do. Because if you give them shoddy work, they will never, ever work with you again, even on a new manuscript. Don't give them early work. Always have the completed, polished, best you can ever do in your entire life. You've had beta readers go through it. You've had maybe developmental editors go through it. You've had a lot of people give you a lot of feedback. You have polished it. You've put it through Grammarly. You've put it through Pro Writing Aid. You have just edited the heck out of this thing. It is the best possible thing you can ever do. Like, like you want this. This is ready for publication in your mindset, even though it's not because you will have grammar issues. You gotta have it the best possible ever before you ever go to an agent. However, you do need to start researching agents now because there are things that they're looking for and things that they're not looking for. And so you need to start doing your research months before you apply and then learn what their publishing house or their agency wants and then learn how to write a really good query letter. So until your book is 100% perfect in your mind, do not even talk about it publicly. Okay, you are not telling people you've got a book, you're not telling people you're writing, you're not telling people you're an author, because if you don't have a buy link for people, when they start to hear your thing, if they think, oh, that sounds like a cool book, I want to get it, and you don't have a buy link for them, they will not buy it when it comes out, because it's going to be, especially if you're going to the traditional world, it will be a several year process to get your book out, and you will lose all those readers. Just don't do it. Okay, Whew. what's your beta reading process? Um, so I have... I have some really cool, actually, let, let me step back. I'm at the point in my career where I don't necessarily use beta readers so much. I go directly to people who are editing my book um, for grammar and spelling and all those things. I am really, really tight with my writing, so I usually don't have anything that I have to tweak majorly inside of my story. I might like add in a couple lines, but I don't have to change anything. But that's just because I'm two dozen books in and I'm like, like I got this down to a science. Um, I used to have about three beta readers. I usually recommend having three beta readers on your book. One is not enough. Two really isn't enough. Three is good because they have a lot of opinions and then you can look for trends within what they're saying and feedback. More than three gets a little messy. It's like too many cooks in the kitchen. So find three people. If you know them and you trust them, send them your entire book and get the feedback. You got to tell them exactly what you want. If you don't know them, test with one chapter, then with three chapters, then with five chapters. If you like it, then you can give them the rest of the book and then get the feedback. Always give them a deadline. Tell them when you need it. If they don't have time to do it, find another beta reader. But have about three opinions on this who are really studied up on that genre, whatever you happen to write. Know the trends, know the tropes, know what to expect, and can be looking out for errors and things like that. I usually give them about two weeks to read the book and then they can send it back. Anything that I need to tweak, I tweak up and then I send it to the professional editor after that point. All right. Uh, Ethan says, I am writing an urban fantasy. Wow, it's really hard to see. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's right inside of my ring light on this one. I'm writing an urban fantasy book set in Hong Kong. Oh, that's fun. With spies. Ethan. That's cool. It's completely new to me, like a whole new world. How do I almost get used to the style? Um, 
So that's really cool. Spies, I'm not quite sure of your question, Ethan. How do you get used to the style of writing? You just have to keep writing with that one. Um, and uh, just like life tip here for you authors, you writers, you aspiring authors. Your first couple of chapters are going to sound really, really weird when you read them back because you didn't get into the flow and style of it and you didn't know your characters. So in almost like 99.9999% of the cases, you're going to have to redo a lot of your beginning anyway. So just write. You will fall into it as you write. You'll get to know it. You'll get to understand it. And then you'll be able to go back and tweak it later. Um, how do you find a good agent? Okay, we do talk about this on my YouTube channel, so youtube.com slash kmrobinsonbooks. You want to hit that up. Um, I have had multiple agents on hanging out with us to talk about the process, about the querying process, how to do that. I do recommend in like the like super short bullet point answers you get on social media and you start looking up agents. Look for a uh, manuscript wish list, so it's M-S-W-L is the hashtag manuscript wish list. Um, and you can look up like different pitching contests and things like that. See who's really active. You want an agent who is active on social media and who is doing things in the community. You don't want people who are like old school and not doing things because they're not going to get you very far in this industry. So look for people who are very modernized with what they're doing, talking on social media. They are educating. Educators are the best ones. If you can find somebody who educates, that's going to go very far for you. And then you need to research their connections. So you need to look at their agency or their house you need to look at the people they represent whose houses they got them into if they are not getting their clients into the big five houses they're not worth it you got to make sure they are working for their people and then you got to reach out to some of those people and say hey i at, and, and, and let me take a step back you do not reach out to authors saying i'm thinking about submitting to this agent don't waste their time. But it, after you submit to an agent, you need to do your research and make sure that people are happy working with them. So once they've accepted you and they're offering you a deal, then reach out to the authors and be like, I know you work with this person. Is this a good thing for me to do? Also, get a publishing lawyer. They're going to protect you from a lot of things and help you with a lot of things and guide you to a lot of people. Um, yes, I can tell you like recommendations. I can, I can say yes or no on certain people. I can help you with some of this research. Um, but for now, I'm going to say head over to my YouTube page, start learning, and stay tuned because I actually have some cool agents who are going to be joining us in the not-too-distant future to talk more about how to find an agent. So stay tuned. Um, you have openings for beta readers. As in you would like to be one of my beta readers? I might be looking. You should DM me. Uh, do you read between writing your own? If so, do you have a favorite book or author? Well, all authors should be reading other books because that's just smart. You are researching the industry because tropes change, genres change, expectations change, things, trends, all these are changing all the time. And so you do need to keep on top of that and see what's going on. It is hard for me personally because I write so fast. So I'm like back to back books. I write full length novels in nine and a half days and I just one right after the next. So I actually, I, I have not read for fun in many years, but I do read for other authors as a beta reader, as a developmental editor. So I'm actually reading tons of manuscripts for people and helping them to make their books better before they go to publication or to their publishing house to be published. Um, in terms of favorite authors, I am deeply inspired by Veronica Roth, Divergent, um, Suzanne Collins, who did Hunger Games, Kira Cass, who did The Selection, and Abby Kettner and Missy Kalakiki, who did a Sinner series, Branded. So those are my, usually the ones I like recommend to people to go check out, especially if they like my books, you'll like those books, or if you like those books, you'll like my books. Um, or if you're looking for really good, strong writing, those are the ones that I love. I'm a sci-fi girl, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Um, I feel like reading helps me write, but I'm a slow reader writer. Hey, that's okay. We all go at our own pace. As long as you are moving forward and making progress and not stopping or stalling or making excuses, you're good to go. Whether you're writing in nine and a half days or nine months to write a book, that's okay. You do you. All right. I don't know what time it is, but it's gotta be like 
people going to be showing up soon. So if you've got more questions, go ahead and hit me up. I am happy to get those answered for you just in the next like two, three minutes. And then I'm headed out. You can hear my puppies. They, they clearly want my attention. I've been a little busy today. I've been filming YouTube videos for you guys and TikToks for you guys. Holy crow. Wait till you see the TikToks that I have coming out in the next couple of days. I have like 70 stored in my TikTok just waiting to show up. I put on fairy ears. I did steampunk today. I did princesses today. Like, I had some fun. But, um, I got some cool things coming out for you, but my puppies, they definitely want my attention. <laughs> uh, Divergent, yes! I actually got to sign books at New York Comic Con last fall with Veronica Roth. We both signed at New York Comic Con. It was pretty fun. I sat in on one of her panels. That was kind of we got to chat for a minute after because we each had to run to our we had our signings were at the exact same time two different locations so like we had literally like one minute to chat before we both had to run to our book signings it was pretty funny um but lots and lots of fun if you guys saw me at new york comic-con give me a shout out i had a great time there i'm so sad that they aren't doing it this year because of covid Oh, my fingers crossed. We've got some cool cons coming up when everything opens back up. You guys know I'm a big fan of hanging out at New York Comic Con um, or Magic Con, Pend Con, all those fun, fabulous places that I like to speak at. Live Con. Um, I'm like trying to think of the cons I've done off the top of my head and I'm failing miserably. But you know, it's lots and lots of fun. Um, and I enjoy hanging out with all those conventions. Sometimes, as an author, you book your own cons and conventions, so you get to get tables at there, or sometimes you will be asked there to speak or to sign or to do whatever, and sometimes your publisher will send you, so <laughs> I've done it all. It's been lots and lots of fun. Uh, super cool. My only signed are from Ted Decker, who you got to meet at a conference in now wait. Oh, so fun! That's awesome. I love signing books. It is so much fun to meet everybody. Um, I've had some really fun experiences at the different conventions I've done in the last couple of years. And it's just been a lot of fun, and I've done them all in heels, I'm just saying. <laughs> Alright, friends. I do appreciate each and every one of you being here. I appreciate so much the gifts that you guys sent. Those popped up while I was chatting. You all are the best. I will make sure that I am following you back if you gave gifts. Um, and I might have some special messages and DMs and fun things for you. If you are sending gifts, you guys know I like to shower you guys with presents like... Oprah. Um, so thank you so much for sending all the gifts. I do appreciate those. In the future, if you send gifts, I do have gifts back. I'm just saying like fun things that we can be doing. I will see you guys over at kmrobinsonbooks.com and at kmrobinsonbooks on all the social media platforms. I got some cool things coming out on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube over the next couple of days and TikTok because like I've been working hard on TikToks for you guys today. It's been lots and lots of fun. I can't wait to show you what I have in store for you. And yes, I am working on a new book right now that I will have more information on in just a couple of days as I'm wrapping up this new book. It is going to be a surprise release. So I'm not going to tell you when it's coming out or what retelling I'm doing this time, but oh, it is good. You are going to love it. I'm super excited for you to see it. In fact, you guys actually got to put input into this story. If you were watching my TikToks yesterday, or maybe the day before, I'm not sure when, but you guys got to drop things that I had to write into the story. So I got some cool things going on and I have more opportunities for you to be involved in dropping ideas for some of my books as well in the future. So stay tuned, it's gonna be lots and lots of fun. Um, are there certain days or times that I go live? Uh, yes, usually I have a schedule. I just moved um, from, from eight hours north to eight hours south. So I'm still kind of reworking my schedule. So there is gonna, I am gonna go back into having uh, daily and weekly live streams on different platforms. So you will know exactly when I'm going live on each so that you can schedule that into your life to join me. I just haven't picked those days just yet because I am actually switching the days for some of my talk shows, my weekly talk shows, um, to go with my co-hosts and how they're doing things. So. Um, I should know in the next couple of days what I'm doing going forward for my daily and my weekly schedules on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram where I go live on all of these to answer different types of questions and to drop uh, like live book readings I do over on YouTube.